they pay me to talk and they pay Chuck back there to know something. So if you need some technical <laughs> advice, you go to Chuck. But if you want somebody to say a few words, you, you can ask me. I'm glad to do that. So, uh, But I'm here on behalf of our cooperative solar program. Uh, we are a co-op. We are not-for-profit. We're member-owned. And several years ago, uh, we were looking at uh, solar in Kentucky and looking at an option for our members. And community solar is uh, uh, an alternative that many utilities are providing for members, especially like John explained, they, they, maybe they're renting or they don't have, a, you know, solar is not always great on certain pieces of property due to shading, location, roof directions, all of those things. And so we wanted to have an alternative for members that still wanted a renewable option, still wanted solar, and uh, we came up with what we call cooperative solar. We are a member-owned co-op. We're member-driven. Uh, so we built a solar farm in Winchester, Kentucky. We, and East Kentucky Power is a generation and transmission cooperative. We generate and transmit the, the power for our 16 owner members. We are owned by 16 co-ops in Kentucky. Salt River is one of those 16. As, as a system, we serve about 87 counties in Kentucky. We serve the rural areas primarily. Uh, the lines were drawn you know, in the 1950s as Public Service Commission, so we have set service territories. Um, in our 87 counties, uh, the portions of the 87 counties that we serve, we serve about 530,000 members. Uh, and again, we, we are members, we don't have customers, so, so we are member owned, we are member driven, it's democratic uh, uh, control. Uh, we have board of directors that are uh, elected by the members. Uh, and our 16 co-ops, they, again, they came to us and said we knew, needed a renewable option. We have members that are asking for it, again, especially those that can't uh, put it on their own property. And so we came up with Cooperative Solar. It is a 10 megawatt solar farm in Winchester, Kentucky. We have 32,300 panels in the farm. Uh, and members can license those panels and they will get monthly credits on their bill for the next 25 years. Uh, the reason we do 25 years is because that was the projected life of the panel. Uh, to license a panel, you have to pay an upfront cost of $460 and basically that is the installation cost that we incur. Uh, we are not for profit, we are co-op, uh, and so we, do not, we don't have any fees that are added onto it to, uh, in, you know, to make money off of this. So every dollar that a member invests in the cooperative solar, uh, whatever that value of the energy is that that panel produces, they get that value back as a credit on their bill. Uh, it, we expect it will take about 15 to 17, maybe 18 years to get your initial return on your investment. Uh, but over that 25 years, we anticipate the panels will pay for themselves. Uh, it is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, hear, we get that a lot from folks, you know, is this a way I can go to make money? Uh, but no, it's a very for affordable and easy way to participate in renewable energy. And so uh, the farm itself, if you're wanting to see it, it is open for public tours. We do tours uh, the last Friday of every month. Uh, at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, and, you, and a great way to find out information about it is to go to our website, which is cooperativesolar.com. Uh, we had, uh, we do school tour groups. Uh, I talked to a group last week from Knox County. Uh, they came from Barberville and drove about an hour and a half up and came and saw the farm. So we talked to the middle school at Knox County. Uh, yesterday we had a, a school group from uh, all of the elementary school kids, I think in the fourth grade from, from Powell County. We're at the farm yesterday and so we had 164 students that uh, toured the farm and then they did their environmental education day through the 4-H and so we did that on the site as well. So we see it as an opportunity to educate uh, folks about uh, solar and about usage. That has been the best part uh, from, from an education and from a communication standpoint is to communicate to people how much it takes, how, much an, a sol how many solar panels it takes for them to power their home. Most folks don't have any idea. You ask them how many kilowatt hours they use and they say, I don't know. And you say, well, how much is your bill? Well, they say it's about $100. Well, then you can start to explain, well, it's probably about 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. And then what's a kilowatt hour? Well, I don't know. And so then you can start talking through watts and then you do math problems with kids and they get really happy and their eyes glaze over and you lose them for a little bit. But, but we do that anyway because that's, that, that's part of the mission is to make folks understand, you know, what it takes to uh, power their homes and your usage drives how much you need. 
And so you can change your usage to, to minimize the amount of, uh, of solar or whatever use power it is. So it's up to folks, to, to them, to decide what they want to do at that point. Uh, but we have uh, pamphlets in the back, uh, and we're in the other room, so we have uh, a table set up. Uh, we also have some LED bulbs to give away, and uh, anytime somebody visits a solar farm, we give them cooperative solar sunglasses, so you're welcome to a pair of sunglasses as well. Uh, but with that, I, I, we can open the floor to any questions you might have about our program or about co-ops or in, anything in general. Uh, what is, the question was, what is our relationship to Berea, their community solar program that they have? They were one of the first people to do community solar in Kentucky, uh, but that is through their Berea's municipal system. Uh, that is the municipality for Berea, and we are not related in any way from a uh, 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 company standpoint. So Berea Municipal serves the city of Berea. We serve parts of Madison County. Uh, Bluegrass Energy serves that, that and then uh, Jackson Energy serves in the southern parts of uh, Madison County. So uh, we serve the rural areas. Berea serves the city. Yes? When you talk about your panels and your uh, mm -hmm. farms, Uh, we, uh, we expect the panels to produce about 460 kilowatt hours in a given year. Uh, I have some pamphlets, some information in the back, but uh, you can see uh, in January we expect 25 kilowatt hours a month. These are 335 watt panels that we installed. Um, and the max was about 50, uh, but, but last month in August I think we had 51 kilowatt hours that were produced per panel. And you can go out again out to our website if you're interested in solar data. Uh, we have an ge energy generation data page, and so you can see the real-time production of the farm, but you can also go out there and download the historical uh, production information as well. And so we use that with teachers to see if they're, if they're curious about solar. You can, uh, they can go back and compare it to weather patterns, and, and it's, it's a great way for kids to understand you know, how production changes. And it was interesting, yesterday we were out there on the farm, we started out uh, with the kids at 9.30 in the morning, and it was pretty cold and chilly, and cloudy and uh, we were out there with them and about uh, 10 30 was when the tour ended the sun came out the clouds broke and you know the production went from one megawatt hour to about three you know just like that and so it was easy to a visual display for for them as well so uh, cooperativesolar.com has a lot of information out there if you want to check that out what other questions do you have yes sir if, if you uh, if a toaster uses 10 watts mm -hmm. uh, how many toasters would would you be able to run it a year uh, if you ran them all, all right, let's get the calculator out. All right, 10 watts, you're going to run it all year, 24 hours a day? I'm just wondering, uh, you have a toaster, two toasters, uh, yeah. you know, uh, say, uh, you know, this is, of course, at night, you don't have to go ahead. Just give people an idea, for example. Okay, uh, let's use the hair dryer. That math seems somewhat easier for me because, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> because you use a little bit more and I always say that because uh, people say you know you go to Walmart and you buy a hair dryer and, and they're either you get the 800 model, the 1000 model or the 1500 model and that, that's really related to wattage, how much energy that it uses. So when you talk about it using a thousand watts that's one kilowatt and so if you run that hair dryer for one hour you've used one kilowatt hour and so that would cost you about 10 cents to operate that hair dryer for an hour. That's typical rates, you know, about 10 cents a watt. And so that's typically how I relate that to, that's an easy one from a mass standpoint. Uh, but if you ran that, that hair dryer for, you know, for 24 hours, it would know, cost you $2.40 to run it for the day. Uh, it would take, to run that hair, hair dryer uh, for that 1,000 watts to get it to turn on, our, watt, our panels are 330 watts. It would take at least three panels, it would take more, it would take four panels to turn it on. And uh, then we also go through the process, it's a communication standpoint, to talk about, well, okay, we, we produce this power in DC, but we need to convert it to AC. And so, you, uh, you, and then it's great to tell them, you, you also, if you want to power your cell phone, we have to take it back to DC. And you talk about that little box in, the, in your house, when you pull it out and you've charged your battery, what is it? Well, it's warm. What is that warmth from? That's heat. That is that conversion, that loss of energy. So that, that's heat. So again, it's a great way to talk about what power, power it takes to do that. But, you know, it takes, so when you talk to a kid, it takes four panels just to turn the hair dryer on, like, you know, 
They're like, what? I didn't really think of that. You can only run it while the panel. But while the panel, that, while the, well, that's right. Yes. So, what else? Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's throw a little love to be your tech guy. So All right. That's right. If your large array, is it string, microinverter, optimizer? Uh, we, uh, uh, you want to think, that's mine. Yeah. We, act, we actually have, uh, it is, uh, we have, it's, it's uh, lined up in strings and tables. And so the, the farm, uh, 19 panels uh, make up a string, uh, 38 panels make up a table. The tables then are fed into what we call our recombiner boxes, and then recombiners go to the combiner box. And we have large inverters. The inverters are about 1.8 megawatt inverters. Uh, so we have six inverters in the, in the system. Uh, they, uh, you know, the smallest one is about one and a half. We have some tracking panels in the farm as well. And so we have one smaller inverter that, that runs the tracking portion of the farm. Uh, but that's, so we invert from there. And, okay, so you run strings because you don't have any shade you have to worry about. That's correct. We, we have no, there's no shade. We don't have to worry about any of those things. Uh, uh, the, uh, the clouds is the biggest thing. And you can look at, they can look at panel production, or you know, production across the inverters across the farm and you can see differences across the inverters during different cloudy periods of the day where, where they're producing, so, yes. Time is up, great sign, thank you. But please come see us at the booth, get you an LED bulb and some sunglasses.